The January transfer window is upon us in the My Player Save, and we have a new signing, a new high quality signing at that as well. 86 rated Samuele Ricci joins the club, who looks like he's pretty damned decent. Technically, very good with the. Uh, 90 short passing is very impressive. He's solid in the tackle. 88 defensive awareness is going to be important as well. Actually, he's grown by one since he joined us in the four or five days since he signed for the club. Physically, he's all right. Certainly nothing wrong with him there. And at 5'10", he's going to be quite a big player as well. The hope was that he'd start alongside McTominay in the two centre mid positions and that Tim Irogbanam would be dropped. It might just be because it's the FA Cup, not a league game, but it's actually dropped McTominay and is still starting Tim. Tim was that right-sided CDM. McTominay was the left. He's now dropped McTominay and moved him to the left and started Richie. I'm hoping that for the Premier League games later in the episode, that McTominay will actually play. Shoretire is on the right-hand side. It looks like Ahmed Diallo is on his way to Paris Saint-Germain. We're waiting to see what happens and what develops on that front. But without any further ado, we're going to jump in and start our FA Cup campaign this season. Things are going very well in the Premier League. And provided we can go on a nice cup run too, we could have a particularly successful season here at Manchester United. As ever, please do drop the video a like if you're enjoying the save. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more of this My Player Saver, of course. The Football Manager stuff that's still going up, or F1, which will be returning in a couple of months as well. But for now, we're going to concentrate on the FA Cup journey here at the Brentford Community Stadium. And my objectives for this FA Cup tie are pretty straightforward. Shots on target or dribble success rate. That's going to be the easiest one to get, so that's going to be the one we go for. It was an 8.5 they wanted rating-wise. We can do that with a couple of goals. And if I can score a couple of goals, that should be enough to see us through in the cup. Anthony could play 1-2 with me here and has done. Out the feet, the defender. Quite get enough on that to get it further away from the goalkeeper. It's a decent save by their number one. Brentford today actually starting the game with a goalkeeper in goal, which is what West Ham did yesterday. It's just that halfway through the game, West Ham decided they were going to put their central attacking midfielder in goal and play their goalkeeper at Cam. Let's hope that something like that doesn't happen today, shall we? Ritzy was calling for that. I should give that to Tim. I'll tell him to shoot from here. He has done. And we've got ourselves an assist. It's an excellent goal by Tim. Maybe justifying his start in the team. Uh, down nicely. Shield up forward to me. Anthony's arriving. We'll find him. Here he is, the Brazilian. That's nice. Bend it. Oh, good save by Leighton again. Second time he's denied me now. A goal in this first 15-minute spell. It's headed my way, but I'm not going to get to that. Gotts does well to do so. It's going to fall back to him as well. With that hit hand, it did. Okay, I came close to the free kick yesterday. Can we get this one to actually go in? Free kick yesterday curved a lot more than I expected it to. That one's done the same, but I've put too much power on it. It's gone well over the top of the bar. Tranchard around the outside. And there's Yamli Uke. It's a good goal. It's a very good goal. Part Harris buries it. Dinked up to him. And Brentford are level in the FA Cup. I'd rather not have a replay. But I suppose I'd rather a replay than going out. After 22 minutes, a goal apiece. And there's still time. Plenty of it, in fact. For many more goals in this game, we might be in for an FA Cup third round classic between two Premier League sides. Fantony can play me in here. And I can beat my man, which I've done. Then surely we're going to make it 2-1. Weren't level for long, were you lads? We're in front again. Anthony, Sheldra, Anthony, Sheldra, me. Anthony, Sheldra, me. Oh, I went that over the top, really. My first touch is just going to take me straight into the defender there. Five minutes to go to half-time. Brentford got us on the back foot here. Backtracking a little bit. Got us in the box. And Logan Buckley has done very well to get back there. We scored a very embarrassing own goal in yesterday's episode. Hopefully we don't have any replicas of that today as well. David De Gea this time actually reacted to the ball that was passed back to him in the box. So far for Samuel Ritchie, he's not had much to do, but... We are winning at least on debut, even if the new central defensive midfielder hasn't been able to keep a clean sheet. Go on, Sheldrick, play me in. Oh, he's gone out wide there. Shoretire. 
Where you get? Where you going? Tim, out wide to Anthony. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm going to celebrate with Anthony. Lovely goal. Manchester United 3, Brentford 1. On my own there. Take control. Turn. Calmly passed into the bottom corner. Just side-footed that. Dinked out wide by Tim. I'm just in between the lines there. The touch beats the defender. And you can see the control on the pass with the technique. Control on the shot, sorry. With the technique. Touch. And then just guiding it into that bottom corner. 3-1 to Manchester United, we will be going to the fourth round. Thank you very much. There to Caicedo. Anthony to Caicedo again. I'll lift this looking for shell drop in behind. I've not quite put enough on that. Brito read it well. We could win that header though. We have done. Try and find shell drop this time. Always oh, come back to me. He got nailed there. Can we have the free kick? We can. Come on then. Let's get a hat trick. It's a great position for it. I'm slightly, slightly unsure about how to take free kicks now that I've got so much curve on them. I'm going to put a little bit less power on this and hope that it just bends inside that post. I've got too much shot power for my own good at the minute. These free kicks just aren't dipping quickly enough. Could have had a hat trick there. I've had seven shots in this game, apparently. Two of which have been free kicks. Two of which have been goals. And then three more that just haven't found their way into the back of the net either. 1-2 with Sheldra. 1-2-3 then. Buckley to me. On through the defender's leg. Sheldrop's offside. Oh, that would have been beautiful. He's going to be in out wide. Osimhen was there calling for it. I'll give it to Victor. Go on, son. Oh, good save by Leighton. Call this back, Anthony. It's a corner for us. I'm on an 8.5 now. Said if we got our two goals, then we might get an 8.5. Looking to get an assist as well. Or maybe even a third goal. Oh, but I've headed that wide, unfortunately. Now McTominay is on alongside Samuele Ritchie, so we have the opportunity to see what that new central midfield partnership might look like in the league, depending on if the manager actually chooses his strongest 11 or not when we get back to Premier League action. Anthony into me. I look for Victor. He's going to go solo. And that's why, because he's bloody good, Victor Osimhen. I'm on an 8.7 now with two goals and an assist. And we lead by four goals to one. We are definitely going through in the FA Cup now. Even if it wasn't already assured. Is Osman going to get on the end of that? He's not. I'll try and nod this down to Manstead next to me. McTominay, Osman, McTominay to me. Five. We are bossing Brentford here. This is more like it. This is the sort of comfortable, high quality performance we've become adjusted to this season at Manchester United. We've had more big goal games like this, this season, than any other, I think. Especially at this level. I know it's only the third round of the FA Cup, but Brentford are a Premier League team. On a 9.6, by the way. This is my best performance, match rating-wise, for a very, very long time. A hat-trick and an assist for Tim's first as well. Another match ball to the cabinet. I think for EA Sports FC 24, when we do a my player, I'm going to keep a tally on a spreadsheet of all of my... I've got two assists as well. Wow, we're involved in all five goals. Uh, I'm going to keep a tally of my goals and my assists and how many match balls we get and uh, and caps, etc. And the sort of goals that I'm scoring so we can build together a full kind of profile of our striking capabilities. I think that would be a really nice thing to do to keep tabs on things as we progress through uh, the save. Right. Let's get ourselves to Crystal Palace and let's see if any other transfers have gone through. We've sold a midfielder, but you presume that's Ahmad Diallo to Paris Saint-Germain because that's one that we were already expecting to go through and Diallo has gone. He's not in this list anymore. Is there anyone else that looks new? That shouldn't be, who wasn't here before. No, I think it's just that one sale so far then. So we're looking good. And in the Premier League, we are six points clear of Manchester City now as they drew again on the last match day yesterday. Crystal Palace away. The chance to maintain a, a really strong lead in the league. And great news. Osimhen on the left, Anthony on the right, and Richie partners McTominay. Yes, Eric Ten Hag. Objectives. Ugh. Neither of them are really that great. I'll just avoid doing the heartbeat ones. 
And we'll go for the, the Virtuoso one of a match rating of 10. Guess who's not going to get a 10 in this game? I literally, in the last game, got a hat-trick and two assists in a five-goal game and only got a 9.7. So uh, I think any chances we have of matching that objective are non-existent. But chances of just getting the win are absolutely there against a side like Crystal Palace. And with our improvements in our team now as well, I think our title charge is going to get even more serious as time goes by here. There, guys. Stay down there. All right, make the run around the outside, Anthony. Off you go, sir. There's two of us in the middle if you want to uh, oblige. or look for Andreas Sheldrup. Could go for goal here. Lovely little back heel looking for Richie, actually, that very nearly finds him with a clean con clean contact on the ball. That's a nice interception by Logan Buckley, and we're coming forward quickly again here. Sheldrup's making a good run. Oh, I was hoping he... I could just drift a bit so Shells would run across his defender and I could play him in with a bit of a direct straight ball, but didn't quite work out as Manga got the tackle in. Here is Rodri out wide for the Eagles. Aslani in there to Rodri again. Squared. 1 0 Palace. Lino, the man up top, turns it home. Their first attack, their first goal. Ah, that wasn't supposed to happen. It's nicely into me. Straight to Wasserman. Can I say to on the overlap? Eventually get my feet sorted out. We'll work it out wide to Victor. I say to Victor into me. I'll go to Richie here. He's going to have an effort. Oh, he so very nearly scored a wonderful goal on his Premier League debut. Sheldra, that didn't quite beat Gomez to find me either. Oh, very, very nearly. A worldy equaliser from Samuele Richie. Not yet. I'll look for Sheldra here. Okay. That hit Sheldrup's hand and it's just going to be a straight handball even though they could have played on. Everything went so well against Brentford that I have a horrible feeling we've used up all of our great play in just the one game. And now we're going to struggle for the rest of the episode. I certainly hope not. Go on, Andreas. Through you go, son. I'll try again. Through you go, son. Good block by Manga. Anthony could have an effort here. I could have an effort here. There's not really much room. Looking for someone on the far side. <laughs> Aussie men swung at it. we got... Nowhere near the ball, as it didn't even get as far as him in the first place. Tomine, Anthony, Sheldra, Anthony. Just fucking shoot, lads, please. See what happens when you do. Victor Osimhen makes it 1-1. Anthony and Sheldra. No, oh, no, please, after you. No, 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 sir, I, am, I insist, please, after you. Just shoot, lads. Oh, God. 1-1. Lepanon. That's a lovely ball into the path of Raksaki. He's going to have to look for support. Or go solo. Support is found. Good save by the keeper and corner denied as well. Important that. David Ayer still proving to be worth his weight in Spanish gold. Shoulder up to Ossiman. Oh, get off me. <laughs> he almost picked me up and carried me off then, their defender. That was a terrible pass. Nearly an hour played. Still no winning goal for either team. Into Shora Tire. Into me. I'm going to bend it around the man. It hit Gomez. Did it hit a hand for a free kick? It did indeed. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit less power on it this time. See if we can't get this one into the back of the net. From the edge of the box. Oh my god, I'm getting a bit bored of hitting the bar from free kicks at the minute. Anthony to me. Trying to show some acceleration. Oh, if there was a dive button, I'd have gone to ground there for a pen. That's for sure. Oh, my last handful of free kicks have either hit the bar or gone narrowly over. That was really, really close again to another spectacular set piece for us. Desperate to get a win in this game as well. Is City in a, a game that they very will, very well might lose. With 15 to go, it's still 1-1 here though. That breakthrough can't be found. Up we go, Scott. Well up, son. I've got to it first as well. Just need to find a teammate in a good position. Richie going for goal. Oh, my God. He's done it again. For the second time in today's game, Samuele Richie strikes the bar from outside the box. Soratiri's won that back, but it's not going to fall to him. It's going to drop for a defender. I could have been played in, and it would surely have been a simple finish one-on-one -on -one from there. 90 seconds to go. It could yet still be Palace. It could yet still be us. Go on, Victor. Oh, I can't squeeze it through. 
It's going to be 1-1, one, one, isn't it? We're going to draw here. There's going to be a free kick for them as it hit my hand, I think. Well, it's a free kick for us as it hit their hands, but the referee's going to blow his whistle pretty immediately here, you feel. Go on, Victor. I mean, if we win it now. If we win it now, it's chaos. He's given a pen. In the 95th minute of two added on, he's given a penalty. And I'm not taking it. Victor Ossiman to score his second of the game. Buried. Drama at Selhurst Park. Palace fans, to be fair, quite rightly booing. When the free kick was given in our half... That was already past the allotted added time. He absolutely shouldn't have had the opportunity to even take the free kick, let alone get out the other end and earn the penalty. Wow. That is probably the most controversial moment we've seen for a while. Certainly this season. And it might have massive ramifications for the Premier League title, especially considering Manchester City only drew with Liverpool. So we will extend our lead at the top of the Premier League table up to eight points, thanks to that. I'll have a quick train to get myself back in the starting lineup. And, well, we'll head into the next game. Objectives for this one against Leeds, then. Again, I don't want either of those because they're heartbeat. So I'm going to need to aim for a 10 again. Guess what's not going to happen in this game of football? I can't believe we won against Palace. That is arguably the most controversial moment of our time at Manchester United over the course of two seasons, let alone just this one. We very nearly took an early lead there through Logan Buckley as well here against Leeds United. I really do not like their kit here that they're playing in. Looks like someone's just had an accident with a couple of buckets of paint but Leeds United not having an amazing season so you'd expect that it would be pretty straightforward for us when is it ever cross to come in here potentially and it will find Anthony oh, it's a good save it's a good save Sheldrick will turn well Ossiman he'll score though we will have our 1-0 lead after 20 minutes thank you very much Lovely run by Victor. He's in. He's banged it. It's 2-0. Victor at the double. Our match winner against Palace. And, well, if we don't win it from here at 2-0 up, I'd be very surprised. An assist for me as well. Thumped that into the back of the net. Osman with 10 goals now in 19 games. And we should be maintaining our gap at the top of the table. I believe Manchester City are currently winning against Wolves. Taylor, Noel, nice, really good football. Cuado, 2-1, Leeds mean business. An assist for Matthias Nunez, the man that left us to go there. Got Billy Gilmore in their midfield as well. Leeds United here. It's a good finish to be fair. David Ahe's positioning is a little bit suspect on that particular occasion. Kind of showed him that whole half of the goal and was like, kick it there and you'll score. So he did. Leeds on the attack. Noel, stop his time, really doesn't mean anything today, does it? Billy Gilmore's effort straight at the keeper, though. They could have had an equalising goal. Three goals only in the first half, not a fourth. With 45 minutes to hold on. Let's just double-check that Manchester City result. Uh, they are drawing now against Wolves. Spurs were level with them, though. So if City drop points, then it's Spurs that we need to keep our eye out for as well, who aren't currently playing, but City... With that draw, if it stays like that, might even fall out of second spot, let alone lose their challenge for the league title. Tight ball to me. I'll get that to Andreas Sheldra. And there's a third. Our two-goal advantage is restored. I have a second assist. I might not be scoring many at the minute, but we're creating quite a few. To be fair, I did score a hat-trick against Brentford, so <laughs> maybe we are still scoring a little bit. And we will, even if they score here, Lees, which they won't now. We will get the result here too. So a commanding win in the FA Cup. A lucky win in the league, followed by another pretty commanding win in the Premier League. It's Tottenham Hotspur in the FA Cup in the fourth round. So the draw has not been kind to us this year. 
with Premier League opposition followed by Premier League opposition. But I'll take the two assists there. City did manage to beat Wolves in the end. So the gap at the top will stay at three. Hopefully I have the opportunity to train again for the next game against Spurs. I don't want to be on the bench again. I don't think I am actually going to get the chance to train before the next game. I might be on the bench for the FA Cup game. I'm not going to read that book because I don't want the heartbeat points. Oh, I've accidentally done that. Okay, well, I've got 10 heartbeat points then. Well done, Chase. Press the wrong button, pal. Actually, I might. If that was a Saturday game, which it wasn't, it was a midweek game, I had the chance to train, which I don't. So I'll be on the bench against Tottenham, which as it stands will be nil-nil when I come on. But this is the last My Player episode I'm recording in this play session, so that might change between now and, uh, and me reloading the save. But Tottenham, Brighton and transfer deadline day by the looks of things for the next episode. Currently in the league then, the gap at the top of the table stands at eight points. Tottenham are, well, actually losing on match day 23. They were level with Manchester City on 46 points, so they've fallen off a little bit, but still having a good season, meaning we can't discount them for this next game we have in the FA Cup. I have a quick look at the squad hub just to make sure nobody else has been sold, which I don't think they have, which is good news for us, unless we've sold someone and then signed someone else, which I don't think is the case. Good. Well, so far, so good then in the transfer window. It all fell apart on deadline day, though, didn't it, in the summer? So we pray that that doesn't happen again. That's all for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. As ever, please drop the video a like if you've enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more. I'll see you tomorrow for transfer deadline day.